You wouldn't think a small lake in the middle of a metropolitan city would be a good place for wreck diving, but here in Seattle, we have a lake that is just full of historical shipwrecks. We've been exploring those wrecks for the past several years, and I feel this project is very important just because it brings a new aspect to our city, to our history that no one really knows about. Several years ago, people began wondering if there was anything of historical significance under the waves of Lake Union. So the folks at the Center for Wooden Boats got together with a company called Ross Laboratories to do some side scan imagery of the lake bottom. Looks like you just passed another boat right there. Yeah, it kind of looks like something. Yeah, it certainly does. They came up with some real fascinating images. Yeah, that would be worth checking out. And the fact that it's inside the middle of the channel would mm -hmm. be more. Of That's when we yeah. knew we had to get some divers down there to investigate. Yeah. Diving in Lake Union is technically illegal to do because of its shallow depths and the constant boat traffic, the constant airplane traffic, the constant rowing traffic. It is just a bustling lake. So we had to get special permission from the Seattle Harbor Patrol and from Department of Natural Resources to go into the lake to search for these wrecks. To dive in Lake Union is not something for the average out of class certified scuba diver. The waters of Lake Union, they're dark, it's murky. I mean, you go down five, six feet and it's pitch black. So a normal scuba diver out of scuba diving class can't do these type of dives. You need to be highly trained, uh, professionally trained to be a deep diver, to be a night diver, to be a low visibility diver because it is literally pitch black down there and you can't see anything except for where your lights shine on. Some of the first few dives we did were targets that were quite large. Now is that off to our, off to our port? Yeah, to okay. Our yeah. Those are the ones you want to explore first because you know they have some kind of significance. So Contact Zero is just past the Aurora Bridge. Yeah. All right, so we actually have a boat. I haven't started recording, but we got a target just off to our left. Do, do we know of one? Uh, it might be a rock bottom. So one of the first ones we did was actually big piles of steel, and we didn't really know what that was until we started mapping it, started videotaping it, and, and watching the video later. It turned out it was giant chunks of a large subchaser from World War II. And this kind of started our intrigue of trying to figure out what all these lumps and these bumps from the side scan survey were. A typical dive in Lake Union on one of the wrecks takes place not just underwater, but it also takes place on the surface, where we have to go through each system to make sure everything's working correctly, to make sure it's breathing correctly, make sure it's giving us the right gas mixtures. We have to make sure all the batteries are working because if those things fail underwater, you got a problem. So if everything checks out on the surface, then we can enter. We usually either scooter out to the shipwreck or we'll have a boat and we go out to the target point, drop down onto the wreck. First things we do is we get to the major distinguishing points of the wreck. The bow would have a name, the stern would have a name. So we go to those points of the wreck, try to brush off the name of the wreck, try to scrape off some of the mud and some of the old paint and rust and stuff like that, just to try to find a name, a, a hull number, anything that can distinguish what that wreck is. At that point, we, we go ahead and pull out the measuring tape. We'll measure the full length of the wreck, 
will measure the beam in the rack, also measure the depth of the rack. That will give us information later to compare with some of the vessels that were around the area at that period of time that may have sunk in Lake Union. After we find a wreck, then we do the research part of it. A wreck underwater is just a, an old hulk with no name, no history. Once we do the research and find out what it is, uh, what its history is, and who the people are involved, it brings that wreck back to life. It gives it a name, it gives it a life once again. One of the most important wrecks we've found to date is the J.E. Boyden. Now the J.E. Boyden was built in 1888 right here in Seattle and the Boyden had an interesting history. It was mostly used in the beginning to transport coal around the area because that was a bustling industry at the time. It was later used to transport logs and it was also used to pull tall ships through the Strait of Juan de Fuca. One of these ships that has a kind of an interesting history is the Kilbronnen. Now the Kilbronnen got stranded in the Strait of Juan de Fuca uh, on shore and the J.E. Boyden along with a few other tugs were called out to try to yank this giant tall ship off the shore. It also was paramount in helping some of the Indian tribes pull in some of their whale catches because sometimes they couldn't pull in the whole whale because they were just in canoes. So it would help in that regard as well. So it was a very important vessel in Seattle history. Another interesting wreck we found is the Gypsy Queen. Now the Gypsy Queen is a wooden minesweeper built in 1941 at Booth Bay Harbor in Maine. It was used a lot in World War II on the eastern sea frontier and also on the Pacific side of the United States as well, sweeping mines, trying to you know make a good pathway for destroyers and stuff like that. Stan and Alice Hill bought it eventually to be a fish processing boat and it's not really known when it sank but it eventually went down in Lake Union right at its mooring and it looks like some of the dock that was tied to went down with it. Of course the major question people have is how do these shipwrecks get there? The truth of the matter is a lot of these ships just got old, they've outlived their usefulness and people thought it was just cheaper to go out and sink them in the middle of the night than to pay for the salvage fees to tear them apart. Sometimes they would just kind of sneak the boat out there and pull the plug and there it goes underneath the waves. When I'm diving in Lake Union, it's like a treasure hunt. I mean, I, I know I'm not looking for gold, I'm not looking for treasure, but I'm looking for a piece of history that hasn't been discovered yet. When I'm down there searching for something and out of the blackness, I see a hull of a ship, it's like gold. It's the most amazing feeling to actually be able to see a wreck that no one has seen, possibly from the early 1900s or 1800s. The reason why I do this, why I dive for these shipwrecks is I like to bring a story to people that have no idea really what's in their backyard. About four feet beneath that hull of that ship is the Gypsy Queen. It is still fully intact World War II minesweeper. I like to tell people and see the looks on their faces when they know there's a giant World War II shipwreck right in their backyard. I mean, their faces light up. It's, it's one of the most amazing feelings that I get being able to share that with my community. 